In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit, Amen. Good people, I'm sure you're well. We are on Friday within the octave of Easter. Seven days after the second day of the Easter Tridum, Good Friday. And I remember that I did not share the morning devotion in video, on video form on this day, although I know I sent the, the audio format. But today, I wanted to mention something that maybe we would have mentioned uh, on Holy Saturday. No, I mean Good Friday as we prepared for Holy Saturday. But then I thought that it's good that I mention it way after the whole thing has been able to be celebrated. Why? Because I wanted us to internalize whatever liturgical activities that we were going through. So that later, when we now take time to reflect deeply, we are able to understand exactly what happened. On Holy Saturday, at night, we celebrated the Easter Vigil. And I wanted to answer a question that uh, we always ask um, on Holy Saturday. And this is about the meaning of the fire that is lit outside before entering into the church in darkness. I would want to discuss the whole liturgy, but it, it is so lengthy, and I would just want to pick only one thing of the Easter Vigil. And God willing, I'm going to, to reflect with you all the other facets or all the other um, isolated, either rituals, if you like, or actions that are done on either of, all, of those two days, Good Friday and Holy Saturday. Those of you who were able to physically participate in either Easter Vigil, you will notice or remember that there was some fire lit somewhere out of the church. And I, I just want to, to reflect with you the importance or symbolism of that fire. Remember, we are in, on Holy Saturday. So Jesus is dead. So why the fire? Now, theologically, and this is important that we are able to pick this, and uh, biblically, Jesus is dead. But as God, he is very much alive. So the very first symbolism of this fire is that Jesus is still living in us. Yes, we may be going through dark moments, but Jesus is perpetually there. Now that is important. And with that understanding, two things again come out. The first is what the fire provides. And the fire provides two things. One, light. Second, warmth. Jesus, who is alive, even when we are going through difficult things, death-like things, remains our light. Remains our light. That even in the darkest of our moments, the light of Jesus Christ is perfect perpetually with us. And number two, warmth. 
warmth that comes from companionship. We belong to one another, warming each other's heart. We always talk about warming up for each other. That is called in proper language, deep connection. And this is where on the same day, we were asked, how deep are we with our brothers and sisters relationship? Sometimes, if not always, we remain on a very shallow ground. So and so is my friend. But we are not able to enter into the depth. And that is not one of the good news. That is exactly one of the things that we are able to remember. But then there is another symbolism of the same fire. The same fire stands for transformation. Because resurrection as it were brings about transformation in our own lives. The other one is cleansing. What are we being cleansed of? Our sins. It is Jesus Christ who takes away the sins of the world. It is the power of cleansing and purification. It is that night of, of power, the night of cleansing, the night of purification. And this comes a week after within the octave of Easter. And we are reminded, if it is true, we rose with Christ, two things must always stand out. We must be warm to one another. Our hearts ought to be genuine and honest on how we go about our things. This is important. And number two, that we become that light. Yes, it is Jesus who is our light. And because we are co-heirs with Christ, we've got a, a duty, a religious duty and responsibility that we be that light that guides the people. Thank you. May the Almighty God bless you, the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit. Do have a productive Friday. Friday within the octave of Easter.